So this is my second time that I, that I will preach in English. So uh, I will try to do my best. And I uh, will try also to be, to finish in time too. <laughs> um, I understand that forgiveness is, is a gift of God. It's not the most important gift, but it's one of the most important gifts that uh, we receive from God in order to uh, serve Him and serve one another. Uh, human nature has always in mind revenge and retaliation. Uh, human nature always uh, has uh, in mind also uh, life for life, eye for eye, tooth for tooth, hand for hand, and food for food, as it says in Deuteronomy 19.21. So this is the way uh, human nature thinks, human nature feels. Um, but uh, uh, by other sense, uh, we see the divine nature, the divine or the nature of, of God is always uh, loving unconditionally. He loves us with this kind of love that we call, that we know, that is called by agape love. So this agape love of God is a love that does not expect nothing in exchange. You see what I mean? Yeah. Amen. <laughs> so, that's what uh, God, uh, that's the way God loves us. And uh, uh, I would start to read Romans 5, 8, where it says, but God demonst demonstrates His own love for us in this while we were still sinners. Christ died for us. Even before we knew, uh, even what I want to say is this, uh, um, God showed us forgiveness much before we knew about this matter of forgiveness. So He showed us. Firstly, He gave His life for us, you know, forgiving us before we knew about the matter. God uh, did not pay violence with violence, He didn't pay vengeance with vengeance, didn't pay Satan action with Satan action. That's the, the human nature doing, not God's doing. God, the, God does not uh, uh, work this, uh, this way. Um, if He would work the same way as human nature works, you know, he would, um, the vengeance, the violence, the Satan action would over overcome God. But God doesn't work that way. Uh, I'm going to present to you four persons that forgave. Uh, the first one uh, is our Lord. Our Lord Jesus Christ, he, uh, while he was being executed, he said, Father, forgive them because they do not know what they're doing. Uh, the second person that, uh, uh, before he was executed, said this also. Lord, do not hold this sin against them. Uh, 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 the third person, uh, I'm going to talk about uh, Pope John Paul II. Maybe he didn't imitate Christ all of the days of his life, but in this matter he... Um, he imitated Christ because he supported the demons and, and he, he loved his enemy. Uh, you, uh, most of you with uh, the age of mine, more or less, uh, you heard that the Pope was shot at once uh, with uh, four shots, four bullets. Uh, who, who knows about it? Yeah, most of you. And uh, you see, the Pope went to the hospital in the hospital and stayed there for 22 days. And after those 22 days, the first very thing that he has done uh, was going out of the hospital and go to jail and uh, encounter his enemy, Ali Agka. Ali Agka was uh, 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 someone from Turkish. And, and he went there and, and, and he said, well, I, I forgive you. Uh, the wrong, 
you did to me. So doing this, the Pope overcame evil doing good. They, you, you, you know, we can overcome evil always doing good. That's what he did. You know, he transformed the ugliness of violence in the beauty of the forgiveness of Christ. And the fourth person that I would like to present to you is Elisha. That episode with Elisha and the Syrians in 2 Kings 6, 15 to 23, it says in verse 15, when the servant of the man of God got up, and went out early the next morning, an army with horses and chariots had surrounded the city. Verse 18, as the enemy came down toward him, Elisha prayed to the Lord. Verse 21, when the king of Israel saw them, he asked Elisha, shall I kill them, my father, shall I kill them? 22. Do not kill them, he answered. Set food and water before them so that they may eat and drink and then go back to their master. So he prepared a great feast for them and after they had finished eating and drinking, he sent them away and they returned to their master. So the bands from Aram or the bands from the Syrian troops stopped Writing Israel's territory. So I showed you this for people that forgave others, people that forgave the wrongdoing against them. So they suffered the damage. Uh, the intention of our God sending our Lord Jesus Christ to earth was to stop vengeance uh, right away. So, God came, I mean, God the Father sent His Son with His purpose to end, to have put an end to vengeance, to retaliation. You see, the Jews wanted a Messiah. But the Messiah that they wanted was a retaliated Messiah. You know, uh, in those days, the land of Israel was occupied by the Romans. And what the Jews wanted was a Messiah that took, take his sword and uh, swept the Romans out of the territory. So uh, they wanted a Messiah like that. But the Messiah that came was a Messiah that would not retaliate, would not venge, revenge, that's the way, that's the word, revenge. So, our, our Lord as the Messiah, He came with His purpose not to revenge, not to retaliate, but to forgive. So that's why the Jews did not want to receive Jesus uh, as their Messiah. But our Messiah is a forgiver. Amen. Um, so the people of Israel, they, 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 they had this kind of a human nature mind of retaliation, of revenge. Uh, there was a, 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 an episode that I want to explain to you. Uh, once, as you know, uh, Jesus was walking uh, towards J Jerusalem. But he was tired, and his team was tired also. And he sent some disciples ahead to a certain village in Samaria uh, in order to prepare a place for them to rest. But the people of that village did not want to receive Christ uh, in their village. And John and James, they had the same mind of retaliation and revenge said, let's call from the fire from heaven and let's execute all of them. And Jesus answered this way in Luke 9, 51 to 59. He said this, 
you do not know what sort of spirit you are. For the, man, for the Son of Man did not come to destroy men's lives, but to save them. Amen. Amen? So, God doesn't want vengeance. God doesn't want retaliation. Amen? As we saw already before, He didn't come as a Messiah to retaliate, but to forgive. Uh, I'm going to jump in my, in my, in my text. I want to finish it, I do. <laughs> but uh, I would like to read a few verses and then finally I want to give you a testimony. Uh, in Matthew 18, 21, 22, it says this way. Then Peter came to Jesus and asked, Lord, how many times shall I forgive my brother when he sins against me? Up to seven times? Jesus answered, I tell you, not seven times, but seventy-seven times. Forgiving is an act of God. Amen? So, uh, as you see, every time you forgive to someone, you're acting as God is acting. God acts this way. Right? Uh, I would say that uh, a follower of Christ is a forgiver. Mm -hmm. no? It's not possible for someone to follow Christ and not be a forgiver. It's just not possible. Mm -hmm. So uh, we have the power, we have the nature of Christ. So as He forgave, we need to forgive also. Amen? So we have the same nature. Uh, if you say, well, I cannot forgive that person. You do not know what he, he, he did to me. It was hard. It was difficult. But you, if, you are, if you are in Christ, and I believe that all of you are in Christ, it's not difficult for you to forgive. Amen? Amen. Oops. So, in Matthew 18, 32, it says like this. This is how my heavenly Father will treat you, will treat each you, of, each of you, I'm sorry, unless you forgive your brother from your heart. Mm -hmm. So, forgive, received by the scriptures, is going to be from your heart. Colossians 3, 13, it says, Forgive whatever grievances you may have against one another. Forgive as the Lord forgave you. So, when we forgive to someone, we're going to forgive as the Lord also forgave us too. Amen? Amen. Ephesians 4.32, it says, Be kind and compassionate to one another, forgiving each other just as in Christ God forgave you. So we do to others the same way. And then the final verse, Mark 11, 25, 26, it says, and when you stand praying, and now you're going to pray and fast for uh, 21 days, and you have this, you're going to have this in mind. And when you stand praying, if you hold anything against anyone, forgive him so that your Father in heaven may forgive you your sins. But if you do not forgive, neither will your, your Father in heaven forgive your failings and shortcomings. So, one last word before I give the, witness, the, the testimony that I would like to leave. Is it, is it possible? Okay, remember this. Forgiveness ceases or stops revenge and retaliation. Amen. If you do forgive, then you can look at on the eyes of the person that offended you, you can love him, you can walk with him, but if you do not forgive, this is not possible. You cannot walk along with no one. 
See, if you want to be free, you need to forgive. Amen? In Hebrews it says that our God forgives us and He forgets. The thing is that He forgets that, uh, 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 that you sinned. Uh, I don't know how to say it better than this. So it says that so. God will uh, 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 stop remembering. I will say this. Stop remember your sins. It, it doesn't uh, uh, slip very much. Just bring them to remembrance. Eh? Okay. Yeah. <laughs> it doesn't remember anymore. If once he forgives, he doesn't remember anymore. So you might not stop remembering. Uh, that someone offended you, but as soon as you forgive, you have the power to uh, let it go. Amen? Amen? So now, I would like to say something that happened in my office uh, back in the church in Lisbon. I received a lady, um, uh, her face was very heavy, very sad. Uh, and if she stayed in front of me for about one hour, I would say. It was a long time. And she was so sad, so, so, so down. And um, I, I didn't know what to say to her because I didn't know what was the problem. And then all of a sudden I asked the Lord, Lord, please, you got to help me because I don't know how to help this lady. And all of a sudden our Lord gave me an image. And this image, I saw a room. And the room has its furniture on the left side, on the right side, on the bottom. And on my side, on, on my right side, on the top, was a shelf with dolls, about uh, half a meter each. And I described uh, at the same time, I was saying to the lady what I was seeing in that room. So I, as I was describing the, the, the shelf and the dolls that were there, uh, 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 the last one was uh, red and, and, and black. And uh, it, it looked like, the, like the, the, the Mickey Mouse of the... the, uh, the Disney. 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 Hmm? That's right. The Disney. And the lady, all of a sudden, she burst in words and saying, "Well, who am I? Uh, uh, who, who am I not showing you what's happened to me? Uh, since the Lord already showed all of this, I don't know if uh, I said it correctly." And the lady start to say, "You know that doll, Disneyland doll? I was playing." playing with this doll uh, while my uncle uh, violated me every day when I was 11 years old. So uh, uh, she didn't talk this matter to anyone, neither to her, her husband. To, she had already grandkids, uh, small grandkids. Uh, grandkids? Yeah. Yeah. And then um, she, she was very sad, very down. And uh, as soon as she explained me to that, to me that, uh, I understood, I understood the heaviness that was in her heart because she didn't talk that for ages to anyone. So the point of where I want to reach is this: her mother took the baby by hand and bring, it, bring her to her brother or uh, the, the baby's uncle every day. So she didn't uh, have a, a good relationship with her mother. She hated her. She, she, she couldn't stand before her. So, uh, in my cabin, in my office, I, uh, I directed her to forgive her uncle and also to forgive her mother. 
And I said, well, there are witnesses, because it says in the Word of God that a, a, a word can be confirmed by two or three witnesses, isn't it? Is, am I saying correctly? So I said, well, there's you, there's me, and there's God. There's three witnesses, and you're going to forgive from your heart your uncle, you're going to forgive from your heart, your man. And she said, well, as you know, it's so diff difficult for me. But if God is a witness that I want to forgive, I will do it. And I said, dear Lord, and she repeated, dear Lord, I say to you that I forgive my uncle. I say to you that I forgive my uncle. And after I finished this, this confession with her, I started a new confession for her mother. And she repeated everything that I said. And from the heart she forgave her mother. I knew that uh, 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 days later he, she met her mother and she went shopping with her. She went to the restaurant with her. She couldn't do that before. So what I want to say to you this morning is that it's so important in the times we live in Quebec, in Canada, all things that are happening, we need to forgive. We need to forgive. Because forgiving is a God's nature way of living. Please remember that. If you have someone, I know because I've received hundreds of people in my office, and I know that most sufferings of, uh, of people of 20, 30, 40, 50 years old 60, 70 years old, their sufferings started when uh, in um, childhood suffers certain things that uh, heart, uh, uh, grieves our heart. So I know most of you have episodes that happened in, in your childhood. Please, you have your pastor, uh, your uh, um, wife's pastor, you know, come and, and talk to them, you know. If you find someone that you can, um, uh, that you can uh, open up. Open up. Open up. Thank you. You need to do so. Someone that you have confidence. Okay? That uh, a person that hears and closes her mouth. Doesn't talk to no one that you know that that person is like. So go to her and confess. Say what happened with you and forgive. Her.